Hi all, I have another amazing game with Leela Chess to show you today. This is against Stockfish 8. This is Leela ID 21922. Let's have a look. This game is provided by John D, by the way, and I'll give further details in the pinned comment of this video. So D4, Knight F6, Knight F3, E6, C4, B6, G3, Bishop B7, Bishop G2, Bishop E7, and now both sides castle. So this is Queen's Indian defense territory, the old main line with nine, with with seven, move seven, knight c3. We have rookie eight, bishop f4, a6, h4. This is quite an aggressive move, you might think. h4. <laughs> and we have bishop b4, which puts even more kind of pressure on this e4 square. So some of the ideas of the Nimza engine to, re to restrain white are evident here and potentially double white's pawns as well with bishop takes c3. Uh, okay, so in this position, it's very interesting. What would you play in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, Leela plays a really outrageous looking move given the circumstances. I mean, three of Black's pieces are involved in stopping e4, except Leela rebels against Stockfish 8 and plays e4. Rage against the machine <laughs> from another kind of AI entity. e4, rebellious to say the least. Now, Stockfish 8 plays Bishop takes c3 here. And you might think, well, what is this? But before we go into this, let's have a, look, have a look at knight takes e4. On knight takes e4, it turns out that knight takes, bishop takes, knight g5 is hitting the bishop with two pieces. And now, if bishop takes g2, white can insert queen h5, hitting f7 and h7. And here, if bishop e4, protecting h7 at least, this runs black into trouble after check bishop e5 threatening mate on g7. So bishop f8, knight takes e4. This actually is favorable for white. There's even this nifty move. So if rook takes, there's knight takes f7 check. So there's that nifty move there. So that's why that's avoided. Then queen f4. This is actually turning out, again, threatening mate. This is a long, interesting fantasy line. And now with the king g2, if queen takes, then there's rook h1 hitting uh, h7 after. So we have queen g6. This this is like a, an interesting variation, which ends up with white having a big advantage. And if we look at this again, just for a moment, with g6, then just queen takes and then queen f7 is checkmate. So that's really interesting after knight takes e4. What can happen almost by force, it seems. Very, very interesting stuff. So bishop takes c3, though. Surely this, this does the job of punishing the pesky e4. Okay. Except Leela's intention here is naughty inserted moves, not b takes c3, but e5. You might think, well, okay, this isn't a recapture. We normally are programmed ourselves to recapture pieces. Uh, is there any benefit in not doing this recapture? Bishop takes b2. And again, another intermediary kind of move. Uh, so rook b1 is played. Here, Stockfish 8 grabs another pawn in a desperado fashion. Knight takes d4. Well, Desperando is always that good. And here we see the bishops eyeing each other. Now, Stockfish 8 plays knight e4 here. If bishop takes g2, then after king takes, it turns out, funny enough here, that this knight has not got too many squares because that's that rookie 8 looks a bit silly in respect. It's only got the e4 square. And it turns out that after, uh, say, c5, Knight c2, knight e4, using up the only square. There's queen e1, which hits the knight and stops knight c3. So actually, this is bad news because after d5, f3, and that knight's eliminated without too much fuss. 
once the signs have been formed the bureaucracy got over so knight uh takes d4 here was actually answered with knight e4 not bishop takes takes g2 now we have funny enough another very very interesting move yes this gets absolutely mad and in the midst i mean of all this madness look at these pieces here uh they're not doing anything the rook and knight they're, they're, they're thinking there's a lot of action going on and we haven't even got out of our box what's going on here we've been left out of this this story of this game ah side roll actors hey rookie one was played allowing it seems the nasty knight c3 forking the queen and rook and look at the tension here okay but Lila plays another incredible move in this position guess what Lila plays here if i take off the arrows white to play okay queen g4 leaving the rook to be taken and the bishops eyeing b7 so bishop takes g2 but now the point is bishop h6 threatening checkmate there's a lot of naughty naughty inserted moves in this game which we would never dream of as we're programmed for automatic recaptures and this is just makes the game quite startling and refreshing so g6 puncturing the dark squares something positional has happened in the midst of losing material and all these peace clashes that these dark squares have been punctured and white has Leela has a dark square bishop to celebrate these dark squares and actually we have bishop g5 another inserted move hitting the queen and yet another one bishop f6 with the idea potentially forget about the rook of potentially pl playing like this to checkmate on g7 yep <laughs> knight c6 is played okay that's taken bishop takes and now queen f4 getting getting ready for the termination with queen h6 so the stockfish 8 being resourceful plays rook e7 which gives the possibility of queen f8 now to answer queen h6 with queen f8 protecting that g7 square but now rook b3 <laughs> uh, if Leela had tried to get back any material here it's very damaging this black's just got a big advantage here there's it's, that's going to be good for black so actually in for a penny in for a pound rook b3 queen f8 rook takes c3 and we we basically for all this cleverness and avoiding recaptures what's the final result here Leela is let's count the pawns together one two three four five six <gasps> okay the good news is, is there's six pawns but unfortunately black has one two three four five six seven eight in fact black has not lost a single pawn yet and is thus two pawns up so white here plays h5 now black uh does have some king safety concerns in this position uh, so we have uh, b5 now the very interesting rook d1 a quiet but potentially killing move as is about to be remarkably revealed after rook ac8 we have c5 which is afforded by the rook on c3 protecting c5 so hemming in black it seems there's a clamp imposed on black and it's a very tricky position here to try and defend and you might ask even defend against what exactly well the rooks are up to naughty business here these rooks are up to something very very naughty in this position <laughs> if bishop d5 for example then there's g4 and all of a sudden this rook is lifting well is gravitating towards the h file rather so for example b4 rook h3 b6 queen g5 bear with me here c takes this is a very interesting position where black is getting desperate actually with this whole d6 
because uh, yeah, that's exterminating. But let's have a look at why why there's such a problem here. On e takes here d7. If if say instead of rook c7 rook a8, there's a big problem here with the king side, hg, and now the nifty king g2 on a light square, and supports rook h1. And this is just lethal to double to be able to take on h7. For example, here, bang, rook takes h7, check, and a mate. So black is facing huge problems here. Hence the attempt at distractions. If white gets a few more moves the rooks coordinate on the h file with decisive effect on bishop d5 in this position check it out for yourself you might not believe this but this is really happening this really is happening okay so that's bishop d5 and if a5 just as a more simple example g4 b4 the rook switching to h3 it's it's often it's going to be decisive there's f3 here to shield the diagonal and then the rooks build and then hg and then it all happens it all kicks off rook takes h7 rook takes and then this is mating as well because the queen's also helping a self mate here after queen g7 check mate so the game attempt at the fence is interesting h6 we have <laughs> a quiet but killing move here now Queen e3, which actually just vacates, saying basically I'm vacating my full rank here for a naughty rook. Not that one necessarily, but this one, <laughs> in fact, might be more appropriate. But one of the rooks, especially if b4 is played, or both of them, might be able to use the full rank here. That's the rank which is happens to be free of any pawns, no pawns. That's the uninterrupted rank. Maybe that's a new concept, the uninterrupted rank for switching rooks across. We have g5, but this is a lever now to wrench open the position, f4. And now b4, which does give the c4 square. Lila takes that opportunity, g4. And now it looks as a hold on a sec. Well, there's always e takes f5, keeping things closed. Isn't this tragic? Not really. The rooks double here, rook dd4. They double in time. Black plays d5, and the game actually ended here. It was realized now Stockfish is totally lost and resigned. Why? If a5 or bishop b5, let's say a5, then f5, and the rook's doubling on g4 means a rook sack. Rook takes g4 check, rook takes g4 check. The queen check is absolutely lethal here, and it's like checkmate. So the same sort of a thing if the bishop went to b5 there, you can see the same sort of thing happening, just f5 immediately. And let's, let's put that on the board, actually. So bishop b5, uh, as an example. Uh, so instead of d5, bishop b5, f5. And we're threatening rook takes g4 immediately, so there's no chance for this. And again, you know, bang, rook takes g4. And then the same the same thing kind of thing, queen e4. So let's have a look at d5. c takes d6, c takes, e takes as a menacing d7 threat. Uh, so here, uh, this might not be as artistic as another continuation though. Uh, maybe in more in the spirit of what Lila was playing, instead of exploring this one, is actually, which is more of a stockfish style of play, is actually to play f5 game for the king as Leela did double the rooks. Let's respect her wishes in this post-mortem and go with the philosophy of what she played, which was really just a take on g4 here. This is really quite crushing. Uh, this is a very simple line, just chat mating, but uh, the more stubborn idea, uh, let's have a look is actually uh, instead of fg let's say king h7 queen d3 bishop d7 rook g7 check picks up the queen and this is crushing enough actually this scenario that's more in the spirit of things but for the technically minded even stronger is this and use the d pawn and the clamp there in the center 
is absolutely crushing as well here and then targeting g4 anyway for the king so combining operations over here a little bit and this is just uh, going to be very bad for black's king safety this kind of thing or the resulting end game positions which are crashing through there in the center for example here bang d takes so a remarkable game showing the huge dynamic potential of what seemed to be a fairly dull and locked down position by stockfish eight but the e4 yeah led to a position two pawns down but with an active fourth rank potentially active fourth rank for a rook switch to combine with the already seemingly dangerous dark square bishop opposite color bishops quite dangerous sometimes for the attacking player if you enjoyed the game as much as me then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chassbog.net and you can play other youtubers you can also check the youtube analysis of this game or others in advance from the improved menu learn from the masters okay qu questions comments like share subscribes all appreciated thanks very much